Hey, it's Mario and welcome back to another fine aviation tutorial. This one is an overview of the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator. Let's take a look. Okay, so the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator provide us with turn direction and rate information. The turn coordinator is also designed to give us some roll information. Both the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator are gyroscopic instruments. And in another video, we talk at length about what a gyroscope is and how it works. If you haven't seen that video, you should probably watch it before this one. Of particular interest for the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator is gyroscopic precession. It's worth noting that although the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator are different instruments, they serve the same function within the flight instruments, despite the fact that they operate slightly differently. Because of this, most aircraft have one or the other, but not both. Now, before we get into the instruments themselves, let's look at some turning terminology. When we refer to turn rate or rate of turn, we mean the rate of change of heading. Although a steady coordinated turn involves both pitch and yaw, for practical purposes in this tutorial, we can consider turn rate to be yaw rate. Also a reoccurring topic that shows up when talking about the turn and slip indicator, the turn coordinator, or instrument flying in general, is the rate one turn, also known as the standard rate turn. A rate one turn is a turn with a heading change of three degrees per second, which results in a full 180 degrees of turn in one minute, or a full 360 degrees of turn in two minutes. And note that a rate one turn doesn't refer to a specific angle of bank. The angle of bank required for a coordinated turn at a specific rate will vary with true airspeed. Higher airspeeds require larger bank angles. Now, with regard to the instruments, both the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator consist of a turn indicator and a ball. The turn indicator indicates direction and rate of turn, and the ball indicates coordination. Strictly speaking, the turn indicator and the ball are separate instruments, although they are usually located together on the same instrument face. So when we refer to either the turn and slip indicator or the turn coordinator, we actually mean the turn indicator, which is either a needle or a schematic aircraft. And then there is the slip indicator, which is the ball. The ball is formally referred to as the inclinometer. And it's not a gyroscopic instrument, but works based on the balance of forces that occur as the aircraft maneuvers. We have a separate video covering the details of the inclinometer. So be sure to check that out. Okay, let's cover the turn and slip indicator in more detail. On a turn and slip indicator, the turn indicator portion of the instrument is a needle that points vertically up when the aircraft is not turning and tilts left or right to indicate a turn. The marks to the left and right of center, sometimes called dog houses, indicate the needle position for a rate one turn. Because of the needle and ball display, the turn and slip indicator is sometimes referred to informally as the needle and ball. The gyro of the turn and slip indicator is mounted with the spin axis horizontal and parallel to the lateral axis of the aircraft. And the gyro spins in a vertical plane. If the aircraft pitches, the instrument case rotates around the gyro in the direction of spin, resulting in no change in the relative gyro position and no instrument indication. If the aircraft rolls, springs located here force the gyro to follow the aircraft, resulting in no change in the relative gyro position and no indication. However, because of the way the gyro is mounted, if the aircraft yaws, the gyro is forced to yaw along with it. There is no gimbal to allow the gyro to remain orientated in space. When the gyro is forced to yaw, it precesses, which means the yaw motion is reorientated 90 degrees to become roll. The gyro therefore rolls relative to the aircraft, but is prevented from continuing to roll by springs located here. The faster the yaw rate, the more pronounced the precession. So at higher turn rates, the gyro will deflect further by stretching the springs further. This deflection is transmitted through mechanical linkages to the instrument display, and we get an indication of turn rate. Recall from our gyroscopes video that this type of setup, which depends on precession rather than gyro position, is called a rate gyro. Okay, so now on to the turn coordinator. On a turn coordinator, the turn indicator portion of the instrument is a schematic aircraft. 
That's wings level when the aircraft is not turning. And that banks left or right to indicate a turn. The marks below the centered marks indicate the wingtip positions for rate one turns. So far, this should sound familiar. All of these indications are consistent with the turn and slip indicator. So what's different about the turn coordinator? The difference is that the gyro gimbal is mounted differently so that the instrument will indicate aircraft yaw and roll. Note the distinction between roll and bank. The turn coordinator doesn't indicate bank, but it does indicate roll. Bank is an attitude or an angle. Roll is a rotation or a change of attitude. It's the change of bank attitude or roll that the turn coordinator can display. So a deflection of the schematic aircraft usually indicates turn, but will also indicate roll, such as the roll at the beginning of a turn. The rationale behind this difference is that if an aircraft is rolling, it will eventually turn or yaw as a result. So a turn coordinator can respond more quickly to the beginning of a turn while a turn and slip indicator requires the turn to be established before indicating. Okay, so the difference between the information provided by the turn coordinator and the turn and slip indicator is due to the different gyro mounting. Like the turn and slip indicator, the gyro of the turn coordinator is mounted with the spin axis horizontal and parallel to the lateral axis of the aircraft. And the gyro spins in a vertical plane. The difference is in the gimbal arrangement. In the turn coordinator, the inner gimbal isn't aligned with the aircraft's longitudinal axis like it is in the turn and slip indicator. Instead, it's tilted 30 degrees. So if the aircraft yaws, the gyro will still precess just like the gyro in the turn and slip indicator. But what about when the aircraft rolls? Well, the change mounting orientation of the gimbal means that if the aircraft rolls, the gyro will still be forced out of its plane of spin and will precess as a result. So rolling the aircraft will deflect the gyro against the springs located here and cause an indication on the instrument face. Pitch indications are still absent since the aircraft simply pitches around the gyro's spin axis. And it's important to re-emphasize the fact that the turn coordinator will provide roll information, but not bank information. So the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator both indicate turn, but not bank. Let's clarify this point by considering two example maneuvers. In the first scenario, if we yaw the aircraft with the wings level, the turn indicator will indicate a turn in the direction of the yaw at the rate of the yaw. This is despite the fact that the aircraft is not banked. As a second scenario, if the aircraft is banked, but we are preventing a turn with opposite rudder, the turn indicator will remain centered, indicating no turn. The fact that the aircraft is banked has no effect on the indication. So the turn indicator displays turn information independent of bank information, which is not displayed. So as with any gyroscopic instrument, the gyro of the turn indicator needs to spool up and then overcome friction. In most light aircraft, for both the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator, the gyro for the turn indicator is electrically powered. It is also possible for the turn indicator to be vacuum powered. And this is normally the case when there is a second turn coordinator or turn and slip on board as a backup. Okay, so turn and slip indicators and turn coordinators don't require any special operating procedures. They power up automatically when the aircraft's electrical system powers up and they are calibrated at the factory. So all we have to do as pilots is read and interpret the information the instrument provides. So there you have it. That was an overview of the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and be sure not to miss our next video by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And of course, until next time, onwards and upwards, thanks for watching.